the number of days that you could have a catastrophic fire back in the day might have been two or three. Climate change comes along and suddenly things begin to change. Now it could be 40 or 50 or 60 or 80 days a year where the wrong start in the wrong place creates a catastrophic result. Our primary goal is to contain the fire, to slow its spread and its intensity and have a successful initial attack and a successful containment on the ground. The evolution of air tanker fleets has been driven by two primary things, the availability of aircraft and it's been driven by the availability of fuel. We're transitioning from our Convairs and our Electras to our RJ-85s and our Q400s that represent a significant change in design standard. So our role and our staff of engineers role is to put systems in the aircraft to manage those additional stresses to make sure that the aircraft can safely conduct an aerial firefighting mission within the capabilities of the airframe's design. This is a cockpit of a Cessna 208 Grand Caravan, one of two types of air attack aircraft that Conair operates. All of our bird dog aircraft contain the Garmin 1000 avionics package, which provides some technology for the air attack officer and the pilot that's vital to fighting the fire. It's equipped with three VHF AM radios, two VHF FM radios like this one, and a SATCOM. You can see the thermal imaging here of Max 1400. We're in the hangar now, but you can see another aircraft and some parts on a cabinet here. But over a fire, you'd be able to pick out the hot spots on the fire, they'd be lighter. Along with making sure your fleet is modern, it's designed to the highest engineering standards, agencies are also beginning to look at the entire supply chain. And speed is critical. Decisions need to be made in minutes, from the time a fire is detected till the time a resourcing decision is made. That's absolutely key in any response, in any approach to dealing with climate change. We've developed a host of aircraft that we believe provides a balance. There's an amphibious air tanker, which is an aircraft that skim water across the top of a lake, fill up their tanks, normally inject some sort of a surfactant into the water and deliver it to the fire. So this is the hydraulic system for the tank. It's quite simple. There's a pump, a manifold, and then accumulators. There's two accumulators, one for the normal operation of the tank, one for the emergency drop system. In case you get in trouble, you need to be able to drop that load right away. Then there's the land-based air tanker, typically a retrofitted commercial aviation aircraft that lands at a tanker base to be loaded with retardant and then flies to the fire. It really is the next generation air tanker. Everything from detection to report to the requesting of the resource, the response of the resource, the balance of the fleet that they're responding to the fire, and then the tactics that occur over the fire has to be looked at and has to be optimized in order to continue to try and manage the effects of climate change. Year over year, and decade over decade, the fire seasons are just continuing to expand and the intensity of the fires continues to change. The prediction of a busy fire season every 10 years to a busy fire season seven out of 10 years. Look at a state like California, where can you let a fire go? Everywhere you look are houses and people and resources. It's an incredibly beautiful, highly, heavily populated area. It's gonna be about fighting the fires aggressively as you possibly can in the areas you absolutely need to fight them and keeping those cost losses and damage to the absolute minimum. You've gotta be incredibly careful with fire. You've got to obey the permitting instructions, campfire bans and campfire policies and procedures. And most importantly, when you see a fire, know how to report it. If you haven't started to change anything and you're starting to worry, it's time.